Hello, hello everyone. I hope it's working now. Hello, hello. Hope people will come in and we will start over. So there was a video and it is, um, Okay. Hey, Carla, thanks for coming in. Can you hear me okay? Hey, Melissa. Come on in. Share this, please, with your followers. Hear me now. Okay, thanks, Amy. Can you hear the piano at all? Hold on, I gotta fix my pedal. Yes. Hey, Monique. Uh, Apostle Mo, uh, I just want to tell you something. I, I really, uh, this is going to be a little, sorry, my sustain pedal is. Okay, there we go. I had to fix my sustain pedal. <laughs> All right, good hear the piano that's good we're gonna do a little worship but Monique uh, what I was gonna say is um, I would like to if you're okay um, set up a time for us to have a little conversation um, just because I want uh, to share something with you um, that God revealed to me tonight um, <clears throat> while you were speaking and um, I uh, I was, I was very blessed by what you were saying. Um, a lot of it I already knew, uh, but there was one specific thing that happened during your live that the Lord just showed me how sweet he is. And uh, it, it's, it's, really, it's really neat. So glad you can hear me. Apparently my S-I-R-I -I disabled the sound for the video. Um, and so... Okay, okay, good, 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 good. Um, just let me know like what your bedtime is if you're a early to bed person because I'm like a stay up till one, one o'clock in the morning type person. So it may very well be that I would be up. Um, I gotta do one thing before we begin. Um, I'm up pretty late usually. Just gonna shut the vent. Um, and so, yeah, just uh, shoot me a, an instant message and let me know kind of like, because I'm an eye owl. So, okay, good. Okay, good. All right, fantastic. Um, well, I don't know how long I'm going to be before you. So I'm just going to explain that the Lord told me earlier to do this. And um, I ended up leaving uh, the house before I did it. And so... Um, I'm going to do this now. Um, this worship is for some specific people. Um, and it might be you. Uh, it might be someone who catches it on the replay. It might be someone who catches it on my YouTube channel later. Um, but what we need to understand is that the promises of God are yes and amen. That's what his word says. Um, but his promises are sometimes not without condition. And that's what Monique was talking about earlier today. Uh, in her broadcast and what I realized is um, if you and and there was also a uh, there was also a clubhouse room that I was in earlier today uh, that I was moderating for and one of the things that the Lord spoke to me was if you're not vulnerable with God then you don't understand that you are in cooperation with him so us being vulnerable with God doesn't necessarily mean that uh, it's not for God's benefit. It's never for his benefit. It's for our benefit. It's so that we understand and we hear ourselves being some, you know, being vulnerable, being honest, um, telling on ourselves to him. Um, and then, you know, not walking around acting like God can't see us when we're doing things that are wrong. And so that vulnerability 
leaves us a place where we understand that we cannot deny that we are in the hands of God and that we are His. If we parade around and we make it seem like we don't need Him, He's not going to come to our rescue. We have to realize that we need him. And we, and, and you know, if we're not vulnerable with him, if we don't share what, hey Yvonne, um, if we don't share what is going on in our lives with God, then we don't realize that the magnitude of our need for him. And so, <clears throat> we're going to try this. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you'll do just what you said. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steady. Let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the right setting sing I'll praise your name <clears throat> great is your faithfulness to me God from age to age Though the earth pass away, sorry, your word remains the same. Your history can prove there's nothing you can't do. You're faithful and true. Though the storm may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast and let my heart learn. your faithfulness to me.
From the rising sun to the setting same, praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and He'll never let me down And I put my hope in Jesus My anchor to the ground My hope and firm foundation He'll never let me down Great is your faith From the rising sun to the setting same, I'll praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. You know, <clears throat> it doesn't matter what is going through your, your mind right now, what's happening in your life, what things have transpired, who's walked in and out. His promises stay the same. And isn't it just amazing that no matter what happens in our lives, our lives we know that God's got us and we don't have to be concerned we don't have to worry and you know me being like super transparent and <clears throat> letting you guys know that you know there's been times in my life where <laughs> let me just tell you um, he's had to hold me he's had to reassure me he's had to put people in my life to um Sorry. I had to put people in my life to um, remind me of his goodness, to remind me of what he's done, to remind me that I don't have to worry. You know, uh, there's been so many times in my life in the last couple of years where the Lord has told me, go and do this. And my questions for him were, uh, okay, I'll do it, but how am I going to pay for it? And how am I going to get there? And where am I going to stay when I get there? And how is this going to happen? And I, I just had to basically blindly say, Okay, Lord, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. I'm going to go where you tell me to go. And I know that you've got me. And every single time that he's done this, and you know, I'm sure that it's probably been more the, more than the last couple of years that this has happened, but this is where it's been like... You know, it's probably happened in smaller, like smaller, on in smaller steps or smaller. I don't know what how to say it, but um, in in on a smaller scale. But these were big things. Like um, the the two times that I went to Georgia in the last two years, um, I went to Virginia, I went to Illinois, I, and all of these places. God told me to go. I didn't know how I was getting there. 
So let me just share the story with you because it, it's one that is a, it's a faith building story. And I really believe that God is moving and shifting in our lives. And because he's moving and shifting in our lives, sometimes we need to hear um, God coming through for people so that we can understand that he's going to come through for us too. And so last year, um, <clears throat> actually it starts with 2018. In 2018, I was asked to speak at a conference. If you want to hear that message, it is on my YouTube channel, which is Straight with an 8 Talk with Stacy. Um, and uh, this also will go on there too. I put all of my uh, face Facebook videos on my YouTube channel. Um, and so the Lord told me, yes, you need to go. And I said, okay, well, you're going to have to provide because uh, I don't make enough to save. I make just enough to cover my bills. I live at an adult family home. I work at an adult family home and I'm the live in here. And so the majority of my salary pays for me to stay here. So I do get a little on the side, but it's just enough to cover like my cell phone bill and groceries and gas and maybe a little bit left over, but nothing like, you know, I needed, I needed to have like a full year to save for this trip that I was going to take to uh, Illinois to, to uh, preach at this conference. And um, it was my first time preaching at a conference. And I have not preached at a conference since then. I have ministered uh, on the prayer team um, at another conference. But uh, I know that there's going to be more. I'm not worried about that. But God had to take me through some stuff. And it started with that conference. And so I said, Lord, you know, I, I have enough for this. Um, but I don't have enough for a vehicle. I wasn't going to fly to Illinois because it was only a seven hour drive. So I can drive there. But the car that I had didn't would not have made it there. Um, and so I had to rent a car. Well, I ended up getting a really good deal on a rental car. And actually, they ended up giving me uh, an upgrade. So instead of me getting like a, a a Toyota Corolla, I got a Ford Fusion, and it was amazing. I loved it. It was it was a good drive. Um, it was nice. It was a nice car. I don't want a car, but that was a nice car, and I enjoyed driving it. Anyway, and so it came down to like three weeks before I was supposed to leave, and <clears throat> I just said, Lord you told me and I would get a little bit of money saved up you know maybe I worked a couple extra hours or something would happen and then he would tell me to sew it and I'm like Lord I'm supposed to be saving money here for this conference and you keep telling me to sew it and so I would get you know 50 or 75 dollars set aside and then he would tell me sew it and I'll be like okay so I just was obedient. Anytime that I had $100 or anytime that I had something extra, he was telling me to sew, to sew it because he wanted the glory for it. And I know I don't want the glory for it. And so I just obeyed because you can't outgive God. You can't do it. It just is It's impossible to outgive him. And so I just trusted him. And so the Sunday before, no, two weeks before I was supposed to leave, one of the ladies from my church said that her and her husband wanted to meet with me about this trip that I was taking. And I said, Hey Denise. And I said, um, Hey again, Yvonne. Um, I said, okay, uh, yeah, sure. We can meet up. Let's meet up. Right. And so that next Sunday I talked with her and she said, can you come out Monday? I said, sure. I can come out before vocal practice and uh, sit with you guys and talk about it. I was not expecting anything. I just thought they were curious. And I was like, sure, I got a, I got a little time before I have to go to vocal practice. I, yeah, I'll sit down and explain it. And so that Sunday, I talked with her that morning and arranged to come on Monday. And so I got to my mom's house where I usually go for lunch on Sunday afternoons, um, unless I decide to go out with you know, someone that's at, at church, some, from someone, go out with someone from church. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And so I was sitting there talking with my mom and I got a notification that came through. 
and it was a $200 cash app and I began to weep. About 20 minutes later, I got another $200 cash app. I did not tell anyone that I needed anything. I didn't come on to Facebook Live or Periscope at the time and say, y'all, I really need finances. I said nothing. And these two people These two people, they just randomly sent me this money. And so that was $400 that paid for my, uh, that paid for my rental. My rental was 325 for the entire weekend that paid for the rental. And not only was it so the I paid for the rental and for the uh, the deposit that I had to put down for the rental and so I was just like thank you Jesus okay and I had a little bit extra and I did I did just get paid so I had some money I could put in the gas tank I knew God was gonna take care of me I knew he was and so here was the proof you know here's this four hundred dollars came out of nowhere literally nowhere and so I was just like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so I'm crying. My mom is like, what's wrong? Did you just get some money? And I was like, yes, I did. And I, <laughs> you know, you know how that goes, you know, when you're just so blessed and you just can't help but cry. And so I was like, thank you, Lord. Well, that was also confirmation that I was supposed to go. I mean, I already knew I got it already spoke to me. And there was somebody or some buddies at that conference or that watched it out live that needed to hear what God gave the word that God gave me. So I knew I was going and I wasn't concerned. I really wasn't concerned. And so, uh, come to Monday, I, uh, I had a doctor's appointment or something. And then I went over to their house, uh, this couple's house. And, um, I had not seen her husband in quite a while. Um, I had not seen her husband in a while. And so I came in and, and they were eating um, some supper quick because she was on vocals too. So we were both going to vocal practice after this little meeting that we had. So I sit down and he begins to ask me questions about the conference. And he was like, so why do you, why do you feel like God wants you to go to this conference? And I said, you know, gave him the reasons. And we talked for like 15, maybe 15, 20 minutes. And, you know, I was just explaining, not paying attention. He was eating, she was eating, and I was playing with the dog. Uh, they have a little ch chihuahua, long hair chihuahua mix, cutest thing ever. Her name is Elsie, and she's just, she's gray and white and black, and just the cutest thing ever. Anyway, and so he was like, well, we want to give you some money for your trip. And I was like, Oh, okay. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's 50 or hundred bucks. You know, I wasn't thinking anything of it. So he folded it, handed it to his wife and his wife handed it to me. And I said, thank you so much. And God bless you. I was like, it's about time. I've got to go uh, to vocal practice. And of course, you know, his wife said, yep, me too. And so I just put it in my purse and I went on to vocal practice. And I, of course, on the way to vocal practice was crying and thanking God because even if even if it was fifty dollars, that was fifty dollars for gas, or possibly fifty dollars toward a hotel room, or what have you. And I knew God was going to come through. I just knew it. And so I was not concerned at this point because He had already given me twenty. He already given me two people to give me two hundred dollars out of nowhere. Like I never asked for money. And so. <clears throat> So I went to vote, went on to vocal practice, had an amazing time. We hammered out the parts and, and sang a couple songs. And then of course I left cause I had to work at eight, um, came home, came in, did my charting, got the shift report, came downstairs and <clears throat> I, I don't even know what I was. I think I did some dishes. I ate some supper or whatever. I mean, I did all kinds of stuff and it was 10 30 before I was like, Hey, I need to go see how much that check is. Like I totally it was like out of my mind. I went to look at the check and it was $500. I literally could not. I mean, I literally almost couldn't breathe. 
not that I didn't believe God would do it, but it, I mean, that he, this, and, and that was not the last time that type of thing happened. Last year, when I went to Georgia for the, um, for the retreat, for the, real, the RTK Inner Circle retreat, last year, in June, a week before I left, I had no way to get there. I had no plane ticket. I had no car that would make it. And I just said, Lord, you told me to go. I had already paid for my, uh, for, I already paid the, the, for the ticket. And I was like, Lord, you got to make a way. And so a week before I left, the Monday before that week, so it was actually like a week and a half. So a week and a half before I left, a lady from my church gave me a 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo with 111,000 miles on it and perfect condition and a year's worth of insurance. At that point, my faith was so high. I'm like, Lord, I know I'm going now. I don't know how I'm paying for it. No idea. So then the following week, it came to Tuesday night and I had to leave on Thursday morning. So Wednesday morning, I woke up and I had zero dollars and zero cents. I had no money for the trip. I knew I was going to be getting my paycheck, but my paycheck had to pay for my bills. And yeah, it, it's Barbara, that type of situation is something that we just sometimes we just we can't control the emotion that happens when somebody does something like that and so um <clears throat> it was 24 hours before i had to leave i was leaving at eight o'clock on thursday morning wednesday morning i woke up there was no money like there was no money in my account i had no money in my cash app my paypal nothing and i had went into a room on clubhouse no wasn't clubhouse at that time it was a periscope i went into a, a periscope broadcast and I just basically said hey I need prayer I'm going to this conference and I just need things to work out I just there's some things that have to work out and I just need the favor of God and I'm just asking for prayer the guy who was running the room said okay yeah we'll pray and so he prayed and um, people came up on the audio and started saying well the Lord told me uh, when you came into this room or into this broadcast that I was supposed to sow and I didn't understand why and now the Lord has revealed to me that I need to sow some money into you within so th so I was like okay so it was like fifty dollars twenty five dollars started rolling in and I'm like at this point every single notification I got I was crying um, I had asked my own I had asked the owner of the company I worked for if I could get my check early because usually our checks didn't come until Friday, but since I was leaving Thursday, I asked her if I could have my check Wednesday, sure enough. And so I was able to pay my bills. <clears throat> I had someone hand me a hundred and fifty dollar check that day out of nowhere. So by the by the time I left on Thursday morning I had seven hundred dollars that had been given to me. And I didn't ask anybody for money. October, I went, I, I had a conference that I uh, was on the ministry team of in um, <clears throat> Virginia. It was Tuesday before I had to leave. I had no plane ticket, but I knew I was supposed to be there. I had already paid for my spot on, uh, on you know, at, at the retreat. Already paid for it. And it was not refundable. And so it was Tuesday. I came home. I work at 8 from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. I was on the phone with my manager and I kept hearing someone beep in. And I was like, okay, I'll just get it. You know, I'm on the phone with my manager right now, so I'll get it in a minute. And um, so I went over to where my phone was and I had 11 missed calls and FaceTimes from the lady who was putting on the conference. And then there was a text message, and the text message asked me what airport I would fly out of. So I wasn't even thinking about it. I just sent her, well, I'd be flying out of this one. And she says, you need to call me. Someone's buying your plane ticket. 
Now, for those of you who don't know or wouldn't think of it, there's more to traveling than just having a flight. You have to have money for food while you're at the airport. And um, the food was provided at the retreat, so I didn't necessarily need to have money for food, but I did need money for an Uber on the way back. And, I mean, I was like, okay, God, you're going to... I don't know how you're going to do this, but you're going to do it. Uh, my mom gave me some money. She uh, had saved her change. So that was like maybe 25 or $30, which I needed. Um, that Wednesday after the plane ticket was bought, I was bawling. I called my friend that Wednesday and I told her what happened and she just began to weep. She told me, I thought that you were trying to make something happen on your own that God didn't tell you. And she said, please forgive me. And so later on that day, uh, I had taken Callie, my cat, over to my mom's. And I stayed at my mom's because her friend was taking me to the airport in the morning and she was going with. And so I figured it would just be easier and less of a commotion for me to leave from there than to, for me to leave from here that early in the morning. Because it was like four in the morning we had to go to the airport. Like ridiculous. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, that was a fun fun time but I was at my mom's house again um, had taken Callie there and this friend of mine sent me $50 via cash app she said she was at the dinner table with her husband and her son and she said she could barely get the story out she was crying so hard and he was like we need to give her some money and so I had money for food I had the $30 that my mom gave me and so I didn't really need to spend money while I was there because food was provided as part of the retreat. I didn't have to pay for any food. And so I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like, I can't believe that this happened. And um, I had enough money for food on the way there. I did bring some snacks with me too because uh, I've been diagnosed with diabetes. And so I was able to bring a cooler with some, you know, some, some sustainable things. And then I brought a water bottle that I could fill up. And then I had like those little like crystal light packets or whatever. So I'd have something to drink. Um, and I made it to Virginia. Someone picked me up at the airport, got to the house where we stayed. It was amazing. It was an amazing time. And then on the way back, I got another $50 that was given to me. So I came home with more money than I both times came home with more money Hey, Sheila. Then Can y'all still hear me? Can you hear me? I hope you guys can still hear me. Anyway, um, so I just went and, you know, I gave glory and honor to God for that. And, um, okay, um, Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I, I just, this, it just keeps happening that way. And then this year when I went to Georgia, the same thing happened. Like, I think it was like a week, the week I was supposed to leave, I got a $500 check or cash app from someone who I didn't ask for money from. This just keeps happening. And so I know that God is on the move. I know that he is providing, but we have to put ourselves in the position to receive what he has for us. And so I'm just excited about what God is doing right now. I, I know that he is shifting things. I know that he is doing things. I know that, that maybe where you are right now is not where you're going to be in five months spiritually or maybe even physically, uh, like physically in your body um, or geographically even. You, when God tells you that this is what has to happen, if you don't obey you are the one that has to answer to him for it, not anyone else. And so don't let anybody else talk you out of what God has told you that he wants you to do. You know, he, he promises us that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He promised in his word that he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. 
And he provides for where he leads us. If he leads you to go to Africa and be a a, a missionary, he's going to provide you with a way to get there. He's going to provide you with a place, to, a safe place to stay. He's going to provide you with the places for you to speak at or what have you. He, where God guides, he provides. If he is telling you that this is what he wants you to do, if he wants you to, uh, you know, move to a different uh, country, if he, if he wants you to quit your job and work for yourself and, you know, and sell uh, reeds from your garage or whatever, I mean, I don't know, then he's going to provide the people that are going to sustain your needs, And so don't let anybody talk you out of what God has told you. Don't let anybody talk you out of a dream that God has given you. God gave me a a vision of me writing a book. And right now my book is in the editing stage. It's about at the 60 60 to 70% done right now. And I really truthfully thought I would already have my books in hand by now. But God is orchestrating this. God is ordering this. And I have to realize that the delays that are happening are because that's what God wants. This book is going to come out at the optimum time that it needs to come out so it can affect the most people possible so that the word can get out about it and that word of mouth can travel. And then it's just going to like wildfire. Not because I'm anything great, but because he orchestrated it because his hands are in it and nobody's hands are in it that are not supposed to be. And that's the key. When God gives you a dream, you need to be careful whose hands are in it. And you need to be careful not to allow people to talk you out of it. Because let me tell you, I, or yourself, because I talked myself out of, I tried talking myself out of it several times. Several times I talked myself out of it. And so I just, I, I, I'm thankful, so thankful for God, for the, the stories that I have, um, about him providing, um, so again, I'm going to Virginia at the end of October. I'm part of the ministry team, the prayer ministry team again at this conference. And my ticket is covered. My flight is purchased. I, I had enough because I've been working some extra hours. So I had enough to buy my plane ticket. And um, the Lord has, he, he, he's just, he's taking care of it. I'm really praying that by the end of October, I will have physical books to take with me. But even if I don't, I have right now 32 books pre-sale. I have sold 32 books for pre-sale. I would like that number to be 50. Because then everything will be covered that I need to get done for the book. And then I'll be able to order the books and sign them and send them. So if you're interested, whether you're on live or on the replay and you want to purchase, reserve one of one of my books, if you want to reserve the copy, um, you can go to the top of my Facebook page and I have a video and instructions pinned to the top of my page uh, telling you how you can reserve your copy. And, um, and I am... I, I'm hoping for the end of October. It might not be till November. Um, either way, <clears throat> you reserving your book gets you an autograph copy, and then you will get your you will be the first to get your books. Um, because Amazon, once I release it to Amazon, uh, it takes them a bit for it to get to get. So then I'll get the first shipment of books, and then I'll send those out. And so. Um, if you're interested in purchasing the book, it's called Get Your Healing. It's a guide to gain and maintain healing. And um, really, uh, there's, a, there's a really short video at the beginning, at the top of my, pin to the top of my page with instructions. So you can go there, check that out. Um, I don't know when the next time I'm coming on live, God just tells me to come live whenever. And so the next time I come live, it might be different than this time. But I pray that this bless somebody. I pray someone got something out of this and, um, yeah, I, I just want to encourage you guys. If God has told you to do something, like he told me, go on this trip in, in October, 
at this point, I don't know how I'm paying for a hotel. But I know he's going to provide for it because that's what he does. And he's done it for me for so many times. So many times. And uh, there's another... uh, And then, of course, the January uh, RTK Inner Circle. uh, I'm planning to go to that, too. And God will provide for that. And so I'm just excited about what God is doing and how he's working things out. How he always works things out. And it's not because I'm anybody special. He does this for everyone who is in line for it. But if you're not in line, just like if you're not in line to get the concert tickets, you ain't going to get them. I mean, I know you've heard stories about people who stand in line for hours and hours and hours waiting for uh, concert tickets or waiting for the PS4 or whatever, or, or a new game that's being released. They wait in line forever. But if you're in the wrong line, you're not going to get what's, what you're expecting to get, you have to be in the right line. And so I'll move that over to the spiritual realm. If you are not in line spiritually with what God has for you, it's not, I'm not saying that nothing good will happen for you, but the best that he wants for you isn't going to happen because you're not in line. And that doesn't mean that you're perfect. Okay. I'm just going to throw that right out the window. Don't let the enemy say, well, because you're not perfect and you sin and you make mistakes, then you're not qualified. No, there's nothing you can do to disqualify yourself from what God has for you. But you also have to be in line. There is a condition you have to cooperate with him and be in obedience. And then the, his best for you can come. Not, like I said, not saying because good things happen to bad people and good things happen to good people. But the best things happen to those who's keep themselves in line and and it doesn't mean that you're perfect it doesn't mean that you're never tempted it doesn't mean that you never choose to sin what it means is that you don't sit there when you when you choose to do something that you know you're not supposed to do you don't sit there and and wallow in it and beat yourself up and spend six months getting over it immediately you repent and you move forward that's the key. And so that keeps you in line with what God has for you. And so, oh, please be encouraged. I hope this blessed somebody. And um, Yvonne, God bless you. Honey, I, I just, I'm so, so glad that you were here tonight. I'm glad that you are here, Denise. Um, I'm just so thankful. I'm thankful for everyone who came in. Thankful for all of my replay viewers. Father, I just thank you for everyone who was on here live tonight that came to support, Lord. I'm just thankful, Father, for everyone, God, who will see this on the replay. Lord, I just pray that something was said tonight that would ring true and grow deep into their hearts. Father, I thank you that that these words that are seeds would take deep root, God. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we would not worry, God, about what you have promised us being taken from us, God, but that we would busy ourselves with keeping ourselves in line with what your word says, keeping our minds armed with what your word says and our mouths shooting out what the word says. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we are your children and that you are seeing about us. Father, I thank you, Lord, that there's nothing we can do that will stop your love for us, God. There's nothing that we can do that will hold up your love for us, God. You still love us and you still draw us. Father, I give you glory and honor and praise. And it's in your son, Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, guys, I love you. And I'm so glad that you were here tonight. I pray that this blessed you. And I hope to see you next time.